Is it a small thing for you to hear, man? But will you hear, my God, also? Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. I think the crux of it is the resurrection. If that's true, then that will prove it. Absolutely. Yeah, so that, that may, I guess my thing is also because Muslims would say about their Quran and things to make claims. I'm going to destroy Islam in one order. In the time immediately after Christ, that Christ was crucified by non Christians. Yeah. Which means that you've got two. Within the archaeological scholarship, and um, I don't want to like I don't want to bias saying that it'd have to be both Christian and atheist. But if enough consensus within the scholarship, then I would probably take it that yes, that we found the empty tomb, identified the empty yeah. tomb of Jesus. So, so yeah. you, I, I want to encourage you to get hold of my. Dr. Mike Lacona. Yeah, I'm aware of him. Right, I've seen right. Of Mike, go and look on his website. Uh, uh, Risen. Go buy his books. Go watch his YouTube videos. Whatever you want to do, right? But you definitely have to look into this more because this, this is the question that will change your life. So it's worth no, looking I, into. I agree with you because um, even all kind of stuff like Christianity, I think the crux of it is the resurrection. If that's true, then that will prove absolutely. Yeah. So that, that may, I guess my thing is also because Muslims would say about their Quran and things to make claims. I'm going to destroy Islam in one argument. <laughs> Right. So Christians say Jesus Christ was crucified. Muslims say Jesus Christ was not crucified. Right. Yeah. So one of us is right and one of us is wrong. Agreed? Right. Yeah. So when two parties disagree with one another, what do you look for? You look evidence of their claims. Actually. Yeah, you look for evidence of their claims. Yeah. So when you look into the claim about whether Jesus Christ was crucified or not, mm -hmm. you look at other non-Christian writers mm -hmm. like Josephus and Tacitus yeah. and other Roman Jewish, uh, uh, d Roman pagan and Jewish Roman writers and see if they talk about the crucifixion and they do. In other words, it was not disputed in the time immediately after Christ that Christ was crucified by non-Christians. Yeah. Which means that you've got two parties that disagree upon a point, but then you've got third party evidence supporting party A. So as a rational thinking person, which line of evidence, what do you do? You follow the evidence, yeah. right? Right, so the evidence is supporting the Christian party, not the Muslim party. The other problem with the Muslim argument is that it's seven centuries too late. Based, it's based upon someone who was not witness to any of the events, whose sole reason for making that claim, the sole basis to believe him, is you have to believe that he was a prophet first. If you don't believe he was a prophet, then you would chuck his evidence away straight away. When, when people like Dr. Bot Ehrman look into the life of Jesus, you know which books they read? He reads, he reads the Gospels. You know which book he doesn't go to? Exactly. Well, um, you probably, Christian claims you probably read the Bible. You could consider it's closer to the time. But isn't there you go, you just said it. Yeah, but isn't the issue It's, not, it's still... a first century document. When was the Quran written? Se uh, seven well, no, late, later compiled, wasn't it? Seven century. Yes, yeah, seventh century. Written seventh century. Well, it depends who you believe. It depends whether you. Was, was it Uthman or? It depends whether. Yeah. Well, exactly. The Quran that Muslims have today is the Quran that Muslims have today would not be recognised as the Quran by Muhammad. It wouldn't. Because the reverse is missing. Their entire passage is missing. Entire surahs have shrunk. There are punishments described in the hadiths that were said to be part of the Quran that are no longer part of the Quran. So, in other words, Muhammad, at his time had one version of the Quran and then after Uthman different version of the Quran so that and you have different versions of the Quran today you know you got the Hafs, the Wash, the Duri one version of the Quran says in one verse Allah speaking I was surprised I just think about that for a minute I Alice was surprised well, he prays to, to for himself as well doesn't he? right well you've got you've got all those problems as well but then you've got another verse in the Quran same verse different Kirat Allah speaking and he says 
they were surprised. There's a big difference between I and they, agree? Yeah, yeah. They're not saying the same thing, are they? But yet both of these things are meant to be the Quran. So was it Allah who was surprised or was it the people Allah was speaking about who was surprised? I guess the problem is because they say Quran is Allah's speech, some of them. So it's meant to be perfect. So I guess they It's clearly that. not. Yeah, but that's their problem, I guess. Yeah. But coming back, coming, back, coming back to the questions yeah. of Jesus, yeah. where we've got to do this evidentially. So if I make a report that about something that I experienced, a life-changing event in my life. Think about a life-changing event in your life. I could be under misapprehension. Like people think they're trying. Wait, 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 let me let me ask you. Um, no, 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 brother. I'm not asking you that. I'm oh, asking you this. Well, okay. Think about an event in your life that changed your life. Can you think of one? Yeah. yeah. Describe it to me. Uh, describe it. You mean my feelings or how what happens? I'll do this again. I don't want. I'm, I'm trying not to control you, bro. No, no, no. I'm asking you a question. You can be describe, leading, describe for me an event that changed your life. I'd say when I proposed to my now fiance. So okay, so describe it to me. What happened? Uh, well, I'll be back. I'll be back. No, I don't. Know. Well, so what happened is uh, we had a hotel with what hotel? Uh, Dillon Park. Where? In uh, Harrogate. How long ago was this? Uh, that was in February 2023. How were you dressed? Uh, wait, really? Because I did. Uh, so I was dressed in a, a shirt, trousers. Don't ask me to call it that one. Either. That's fair enough. Shirt, trousers. Yeah. yeah. How was she dressed? Uh, was she looking beautiful? She had a flowery dress on. If I she had a flowery dress. Yeah. All right. What did you eat? Oh, I ate. So starter was I think prawn cocktail. Yeah. Then I had a steak with yeah. some chips. Yeah. And sticky toffee pudding. Now tell us the beautiful bit. Tell us how you proposed. What did you do? Well, it was a bit much. Um, we're coming into the. So we had a private room booked. Yeah. And uh, it was a surprise. So we were led to a private room. And as soon as she entered, then as I came in, I dropped to my knee and she turned around and proposed. Right. Do you do you did you notice how many details you remember? How many details you remembered? Because an emotionally charged event is something we remember. Yeah. So imagine if your teacher died, was murdered by the Romans. You'd remember that, right? Most likely. And if he, and then imagine how much more you would remember that he rose from the dead. In other words, these accounts are the memories of the people that experience them. And how long ago did you propose to your wife? So, what are we in? May, uh, June. So, a year. Was it four months? Is it? A year and four months ago. Got a pretty good memory of it, right? My point to you is that the, 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 the emotionally, powerfully, psychologically charged event leave an imprint on our memory. Yeah. So you've got on one hand the first-hand accounts of people that had their lives changed by an event versus a book that was written 700 years later by someone in a totally different country and culture yeah. with no connection to the historical event events and the only grounds that you would have to believe him is because he claimed to be a prophet revealing a book that's full of mistakes and that has been changed are you speaking about Quran now? Yeah, I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. So who yeah, yeah. you? And the claims of the Christians is backed up by non-Christian Jewish Roman and pagan Roman authors who also say Christ was crucified. Yeah. So who's right? Uh, oh, you mean about the resurrection? About the crucifixion? Oh, I would definitely. I would say the Christians. Right. an account in specific that Jesus was crucified. So if Jesus Christ was crucified, but then Islam says that he wasn't, is Christ is Islam true or false? Well, it would be wrong in that card there you go yeah, yeah, yeah. but the point is the Quran can't be wrong in one in anything yeah that, I, that's their problem which I, yes. I, I, I agree and with. so there you go we've destroyed Islam in one argument so now let's come back to the resurrection because you've still got this question to answer and the answer the answer that, that I am proposing to you that the only answer that makes sense of all of these events that occurred in the first century is that Christ really rose from the dead what about 
Apollo, Apollo, Apollonius of Tiana as well. He was a miracle maker. And yep. you say there's conflation sometimes yep. with Jesus. So the accounts of Apollonius come after the Gospels. Yeah, but there's still claims about him. Yeah? No, the, the accounts of Apollonius are written centuries after the Gospels. In other words, the Romans are writing a story based on the Gospels. Yeah, I can't remember when Apollonius you know, yeah, yeah, when when he was alive is irrelevant. But wouldn't that be also eyewitnesses? Like, no, they weren't eyewitnesses. No, no, no. No, you got it wrong. The, the accounts of Apollonius come centuries after Apollonius's life. But don't the Gospels of Mark... No, Mark they come the within thing. decades. No, no. Isn't that year like, yeah, 50, like 30 90 years? 90 AD is when all the Gospels were written, which means that it was in living memory. But when is the earliest? Mark is the earliest. Well, I actually believe that all the Gospels were written before 70 AD. All of them, even John? Yes. That's quite a claim to make. Yes. Against the scholarship. Because they've been thinking... It well, not against all. Century. Dr. Daniel Wallace agrees with me. Well, that's one person. He's not just one person. There's other scholars like... Um, of course there are. Of course there are. You're absolutely right. I can't remember a scholar's name. I, I, but, but that's just... Uh, okay. So, for the sake of argument, let's just put John mm -hmm. in 90 AD. But that means all the Gospels are done, finished, by 90 AD. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds possible. Right. Which means it's within living memory. Okay. Which strengthens my argument. But we don't know... I thought we don't know the authors, really. I thought, because Mark... Was Mark... Matthew was a tax collector? Why do you think we don't know the authors? Well, because they, we so probably we don't know much about the authors themselves, so we don't have... We do, actually. We do. We do? Yes, of course. Is it outside the Bible? Yes, it's in church tradition. Yeah. But that's from within the faction itself. Where else would it come it's, from? The, where else would it come Muslims from? Muslims would make the same things as well. But where else would it come from? Yeah, but that's it. Then you'd have to have... Well, no, hold on one second. Yeah. Where else would knowledge of the authors of Christian books circulated amongst Christians well, like, come from? Well, like, for instance, Tacitus mentions uh, Christians, so that's a non Yeah, but uh, partisan, Tacitus... Right, so... That would prove so, that Christians... So, so, oh, sorry. Yeah, so Christians. Let, let, let me give you some reasons why we can know that the Gospels were written by who they said they were written by. Sure. Firstly, physical evidence. Every single gospel that we have that has a page saying the gospel according to and a name all say universally Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Okay, yeah. So all physical evidence agrees with the claim, right? That's just the names. That's who we're talking about. Yeah. So all physical evidence agrees with the tradition. Yeah. Now, secondly, the universality and consistency of the tradition. Imagine if Christians were just making it up. Yeah. If they were just making it up, bear in mind there's no internet, no Wi-Fi, no email, no telephones, no cell phones, no text messages, no WhatsApp. If people were just making it up in different parts of the world, then in one part of the world, they'd say the gospel according to James, and the gospel according to Thaddeus, and the gospel according to Peter, and the gospel according to Mark. In other words, we wouldn't have uniformity. But everywhere around the world, all Christians agree that the four Gospels were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Okay. Secondly, extra-biblical testimony, mm -hmm. right? We have the writings of church fathers yeah. who talk about the authorship of the Gospels. And all of them talk about Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, bearing in mind that they had no way to communicate, no way to come up with a universal picture, and were not necessarily familiar with one another's writings. Yeah. And yet, the tradition in different writers and different authors pops up in different parts of the world at different times, and they all say that the Gospels were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Mm -hmm. Now, there's only one way we could explain this. The tradition that Matthew wrote Matthew, and Mark wrote Mark, and Luke wrote Luke, and John wrote John, is so early in the existence of the church that it seeded itself across the church as the church spread and that's why it's universal, independently testified, backed up by the archaeology. So who's the earliest church father or apostle who writes about the Gospels, specifically referring to the Gospels of, we're talking about the Gospel of Mark, so I'm trying to see how long after it was following the crucifixion. I am going to take a guess off the top of my head and say Ignatius.
what year was But I might be wrong. Oh, Polycarp. No, Polycarp. His first century, is it? Yeah, he's 90 AD. 90 AD. So Polycarp. But isn't there like an intervening period where, because, like, I mean, I don't take this wrong, but if you repeat a lie long, you know, enough times, it becomes the truth. Yeah, that like, kind of thing like the lie that all Qurans are the same everywhere in yeah, the world. Yeah, that if you repeat it enough time, everybody believes it. But couldn't that be the case with these Gospels as well? Because right. the Gospels were, um, um, what's the word, you know, when they became holy writ? Um, well, they became holy writ. Because you, you had other Gospels, like Gospel of Thomas. Late. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they, it was late, and even Revelation wasn't accepted until Revelation. No, Reve no, no, hold on. On Revelations, you got a point. Revelations wasn't universally accepted because until much later, but Revelations has historical precedence that goes back into the history of the but church. But that means there was dispute within Christian within Christianity. Yes. Yeah, so now we have to now we have to think why. So let's think why, like rational people. So here's the reason why. Right, and then after this, I wanna. After this, I, I, I want to move around and circulate okay. and see what's going on. Right? Christ is King! Christ is King! Christ is King! Christ is King! Right? So, in terms of, in terms of the the, the Gospels. Um, that they were accepted as holy writ straight away. What do you mean straight away? Right, so as soon as anyone starts writing about the Christian faith, they start quoting the Gospels. Clement of Rome, Irenaeus, Papias, Ignatius, they start quoting the Gospels or referencing the Gospels, mm -hmm. which means that, right, and Clement of Rome is 90 AD, Papaya, um, um, Polycarp is 90 AD, yes. Ignatius, Irenaeus, they're both before 150, AD. But these are really early. Quotation equals canonicity. Is that what you mean? It, it shows. It shows. It shows that the church accepted these as texts that it considered to be holy. But as time went on, different parts of the church accepted some of the books. So, like the Shepherd of Hermes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think the Acts of Peter might also yeah, be one. Right. So, and these became localized books accepted by a particular church. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. But the four Gospels were universally accepted by all oh, churches, okay. as were the letters of Paul. Mm -hmm. There was only five books from a current New Testament that were disputed. Hebrews, Revelations, Peter 2, John 2, and John 3. I thought some of the letters Paul did not write them, but they are, they are in the Bible. They only, but they weren't written, they were written by that's what some else. scholars. That's what some scholars say. That's what some scholars that's say. That's what I've got to go off of. Yeah, but, but there are some scholars that say oh, the other thing. I, I can't read Hebrew but there are some Hebrew. other scholars that say another thing, which is yeah. that Paul wrote them. So, yeah. so you've got scholars arguing with scholars. So that's the way that was against yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah, right? So so the, the, the point that I'm making to you is that the, the understanding of what was canon came over time. Yeah. It wasn't something that was just, it, was, it wasn't something there immediately. And the reason why it wasn't there immediately is because of the persecutions, because of the lack of education, Education and because of the lack of communication. And so it took time for the church to recognize what was its scripture. The Romans, when they, especially under Decius, Emperor Decius, yeah, the persecution, yeah, demanded the that we had to hand over our Christian material or face death. And some Christians buckled, which means that some lines of transmission of certain books got paused or interrupted. They were delayed, and as certain they, in the sense of the church's awareness of them, arrive late. Yeah. And then they started arguing about whether they are scripture or not, because the church was like, oh, I've not read Revelations before. Mm -hmm. And the reason was because during the persecutions, the transmission of, of Revelations was interrupted. Yeah, I think that's what, so, but to me, that would be an indication of it's, this is a man-made process. So how I would look at it is that Jesus, and what seems to be in the scholarship, that Jesus was a failed apocalyptic creature and you're taking bottom and all the way aren't you is it is it specifically by this is a bottom and there's that woman as well and i'm sure bottom yeah. not alone but yeah, yeah. bottom yeah. the principle
principal arguer of this. Yeah, no, fair. That's kind of because that because that to me, I guess, from my worldview, makes sense. He's a veiled apocalyptic preacher, and then his um, disciples could not un understand, or people following could not understand why did he fail. And some of them might have come up with this well, this um, idea of uh, the resurrection and so on, and you know, then we go from there. Right. So your theory is that the resurrection was invented late. I believe. Yeah. It's probably prove it. I can't prove it. But that's the but point. We're arguing. Hold on. So we're arguing. It's my hypothesis. Right. Hypothesis, I so I'm giving you the hypothesis of the resurrection. You're giving me the hypothesis that it was invented late. So now we have a look at. One second. Now we have a look at where the evidence is, and the evidence is firmly on my side because all of the gospels, which are first-century accounts, were all written. I would argue before 70 AD. Right. If you're going to argue that it was late, then you've got to define late as 70 AD. Sorry, I correct that. I don't necessarily believe that it appeared late. It could have appeared very soon after Jesus was. Thank you. What? But now we're back yeah. to the question: Why? Well, that's exactly my thing. Is that um, they came to this belief because of his failure. He died. It shouldn't have died. It should have been the Messiah, according to under Jewish tradition. But he failed. So they came up with an offshoot Jewish. Because um, there were other right. Jewish sects at the time as but well. But the thing is, they don't. That these people, what would convince you that someone rose from the dead? Someone rose from the dead. It's a very high bar, probably. Because I've yet to. I've why yet to why do you think people in the past were any different? Mm, they, for instance, well, for instance, people were in general less educated than most of that's the That's ignorant. That, that's your ignorance about the past. Yeah. People in the past built the pyramids, bro. That's quite an achievement. People in the past built the Great Wall of China. People in the past, the Vikings managed to navigate all the way to North America. No, I meant collectively, not necessarily operationally. Right. So, so my, my, yeah. the Romans were not ignorant. The, the Greeks, no. the Greeks managed that worked out that the world was a circumference. The world was round. Right. Yeah. <laughs> to over two thousand years ago, the Quran in the seventh century thought the world was flat. So, so the, the point is, bro, it, you're, you're making a slur about people of the past actually you think I think you make a po good point it might not be I'd have to correct that it's not necessarily education it's more the worldview they had at the time right so great think, question yeah sir no great point great point. yeah so I, I accept that I think I shouldn't have said education okay, fair enough. Said more fair enough. Worldview that they brilliant had. and I'll give you an example of what you're talking about because the Hollywood movies if you're in a field at night and you see a little uh, white blob skimming across the sky and then suddenly shooting upwards in Instinctively, where does your mind start to go and say what well, it is? I was thinking of aliens. There stuff. you go. Yeah. Right. That's so the culture. Exactly. This is my point. I this. This. Great. Yeah. You're helping me make my point now. Yeah. I want to suggest to you that you read N. T. Wright. N. T. Wright is one of the foremost scholars yeah, about Second Temple, uh, Second Temple Judaism. Right. And he talks about the cultural expectations of the Jewish people at the time of Jesus. Here's what they didn't expect. They didn't expect a crucified risen Messiah. They didn't believe in bodily resurrection. They, no, they didn't, be, they didn't believe in just spiritual resurrection. Resurrection for them had to be bodily. It couldn't be metaphor. It couldn't just be spirit. It had to be in the flesh. That's that. I'm, I'm just telling you N.T. Oh, yes, Wright's yes. position. N.T. Wright points out that the, the, the founding of the church um, breaks open the, the, the cultural paradigms of uh, of Judaism so at new. that time. It, it's revolutionary, it yeah. breaks everything open, it yeah. destroys categories and creates new ones. That That's yeah. N.T. Wright's position. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so he's a foremost scholar on those things. So my point to you is that mm -hmm. We're still on this question of explaining why all those base facts that I laid out for you occurred. And your hypothesis that they were created later, right, I think doesn't stand because evidentially we see that the belief in the resurrection was extremely early. No, when you mean late, do you mean... Uh, well, you define it. You're making the hypothesis. How late are you suggesting? Because mine my, my could, be, could be almost immediately after the, this whole debacle. Well, debacle right, well, that debacle. destroys your hypothesis then. No, but that doesn't necessarily need to be a supernatural thing. Okay, so if you're saying that it was it invented, could... on what grounds was it invented? Why was it invented? Who invented it? So, um, I guess... So, so, I guess some people might say that... You just have to ignore the Islamist yeah, thugs on one of these. So, it could be, like, people think, I mean, I'd have to look into this more myself. But infusion from 
the Greek philosophy like Platonism otherwise which believed in souls and uh, Jews at the time a lot of them might have not but they might have been uh, Jews that you know like the Septuagint they were Jews that were what's the word you know when, you, when they became more Greek Hellenized, you know, Hellen Hellenized yeah so Hellenized yeah. Jews so they would have had an understanding of that yeah. that message even if it was a very tiny minority of followers that came to believe that to them it would be more receptive because they understand yeah. by Plato the souls and otherwise so it would have made sense to them that someone could have been resurrected yeah. bodily in the sense of the soul no 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 no, no the, 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 the the resurrection, the resurrection, contra the, the Jewish expectation of resurrection was general resurrection in the body. Right? But remember, we're talking about fishermen here. Hellenization tended to occur amongst the better off because they were the ones that would interact with the social elites, which were the Romans that were Hellenized themselves. Right? So you see Hellenization amongst more the elites rather than uh, uh, amongst the peasants. Yeah. And the Aramaic speaking peasants, because of their ignorance in terms of culture and language, yeah. would not have been as Hellenized as the elites. But Hellenization itself was something that the Pharisees were always fighting against. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It was something that the Essenes were fighting against. So there were many groups within Jewish culture pushing back against Hellenization. Okay? Now, I agree with Bart Ehrman that Jesus Christ was an apocalyptic prophet, okay. right? He was. We believe that as Christians. Um, apocalypsis means to reveal that which is not known before. It doesn't mean the end of the world. Christ is talking about the end of the age. He's talking about a coming age. He's talking about the coming of the kingdom of God. Right. You know, repent, repent and believe the kingdom of God. I yeah. thought he said he was coming within like people that were there. Was he, I don't You're failing, where, Obi. I don't know where he <laughs> preached. Um, was the sermon on the mount? But um, he said that he was coming within. So, some people here would be would would, would see the kingdom of God coming. So it would be people's yes. lifetime. Yes. And so why hasn't that happened? Well, no, but you're wrong. You've got the because you've not got the Christian understanding of the kingdom of God. Yeah. The kingdom of God was established in that generation. Okay. I am part of the kingdom of God. Every Christian is part of that kingdom. It is here and it is coming. It is something that exists and it's something that is being built. When you build a cathedral, the people that lay the foundations aren't the ones that put the tiles on the roof. It happens centuries later. Just as we, and, and the kingdom of God is the same. The people that laid the foundations were the apostles, and that's how the Bible describes them, as the, 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 the cornerstone and the pillar of truth is the prophets and the apostles. That doesn't, so the kingdom of God, as Jesus said, was established at the time of the apostles. But wouldn't some of the things like we said, like uh, what I just said specifically, wouldn't it be maybe in part supported by things like when Jesus told, I can't remember who it was, which gospel, but when he told to leave the dead, to bury the dead, their own? Yes. So isn't that a very apocalyptic message? No, when he said, because, look, no, I'm gonna, I know the verse you're talking about. Yeah, because I just wanted to just a little bit context, because yeah. for the ancient people, like ancient Greeks and others, it was very important to be buried, yeah. because that was, you know, that was a, a sacrilege if you didn't, like it was very bad if that didn't happen. So if you take it in the context of that, that was something very revolutionary to say. To Thank leave, you. Uh, yeah. Thank so, you, yes. Because Christ was bringing something new. He was bringing a new covenant. But the statement that he made about the dead sorry. burying their own dead is, is actually a reference to the fact that people are dead in their sins. That until they enter into the kingdom of God, they are dead in their sin. In other words, they are not alive before the sight of God. You know, so and I and I, I want to tell you, bro, and 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 by you, I'll, I'll reference everyone else that's listening, that unless you are in the kingdom of God, unless you're following Christ, you are dead in your sins. You're not actually alive in terms of your spirit, right? And and so when Christ teaches this, when he says to that person, "Let the dead bury their own dead." He, he's making a statement about an existential question, about the nature of his ontology, about the nature of his being, and he's saying it to shock, just like you've pointed out, to try and rouse the person to think again. 
to draw him towards repentance. Yeah? What's your name, bro? Oh, Ito. Ito. Where are you from? Uh, well, where you mean originally? Or where Wherever you want to. Well, I came from, oh, sorry, I came from Leeds. It's really lovely to speak to Ito. Are you a Muslim? No. no. I'm go, I'm go, where's the name from? Oh, no, it's from, it's from Nigeria. Oh, right. My apologies. No. I thought it was like, it sounded a bit Middle Eastern no, to my ears. No, it's Ito. Ah, okay. Yes. Well, it's really lovely to meet you, Ito. Likewise. I'd like to give you a book. Have you got a Bible? Yes, I do. Yes, sir. Brilliant. I want to give you another book then. <laughs> It's really lovely to speak to you. Do you do anything, because uh, one's a bit far, so I don't get to come here often, but do you do anything online at all? Yeah.